Hey guys, welcome back to episode two of the Blanket Fort Studio. Thanks for coming back. I do appreciate it. Remember, if you like the show, please click like or subscribe and uh, tell your friends, uh, especially those that are looking to become professional voiceover artists. Remember, I'm you know still in the burgeoning early stages of my career. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pass on information to help you. Uh, become a better voiceover artist like I hope that I will become a better voiceover artist over the course of all of this. So today, here's what we're going to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about the very basic equipment you need to get started with your voiceover career. And I'm talking about the very basics, including, but not limited to, just plain cell phones and all the way up to having your own home uh, studio. So stick around check it out. We'll be going and testing some of these devices and we'll be going back into the studio uh, to do some actual recording so you can hear the difference between those varying environments. All right, let's get started. If you're going to record yourself for voiceovers or any other reason, you need three things. A microphone, a recording device of some sort, and a quiet place to record in. That's literally it. Of course, the range of devices out there available for recording are quite complex. Let's start with the most basic setup, a cell phone and a quiet place to record. One of the quietest places in your house is actually your automobile. The reason is, is that automobile manufacturers make your cars so that you don't hear noise when you're driving down the highway at 60 miles an hour. That's why you don't hear the wind whipping through the car like you do when you roll down the windows. And you can get a pretty good sound court recording environment sitting in your car. Not bad, right? Now, I've never actually tried this. This is actually my first time recording in the car, but it sounds pretty close to my what my audio booth sounds like. And I'm hoping that when I get this recording out of the phone, this will be this will sound fairly impressive. So you can use your phone to get a voice over quality recording. And you can look at your phone and see where your levels are just to make sure you're not being too loud or being too low. We'll test this. We'll, you know, and obviously you'll, you'll hear this when we play, when you, you know, see this video and <laughs> strangely enough, so will I, because I'll be seeing it for the first time, but I've heard that this is a technique that you can use. Another device that you can use to do home recording for voiceover is one of these little bad boys. This is a little handheld digital recorder. In this case, it's the Zoom H4n. Now this is an older model recorder. I've had this thing for probably six or seven years, but it does a great job of capturing voice. Now on the front end here is a stereo mic that you can also set for mono use. And uh, it also has mic jacks in the back where you can actually add real microphones, uh, condenser mics and dynamic mics both. Uh, this supplies phantom power that dynamic mics need. So, uh, you know, and we'll talk about the difference between dynamic and, cell and uh, dynamic and condenser mics at another time. But just know for now that this thing has a built in microphone and it's a it's a portable studio all in of itself. So you could take this thing into your car and record yourself a nice, quiet voiceover and get exactly the results you need. The same kind of results you would get out of a cell phone and or better yet, even almost uh, the same kind of results that you could get out of a, a full quality uh, home studio like the one that I have. So, you know, just, you know, keep your options open. This thing costs like all of like 200 bucks and a microphone, an actual microphone to go with it would cost you anywhere between $50 and $250. So for $450, you've got a whole studio here so that you can go off and make thousands, you know, that's the beauty of this, okay? The, equip the equipment that you need, not all of it is as expensive as you would think, but you still need a quiet place to record. And like I said, a car is great. You can also use a closet. Uh, you can use any place that's got no sound, any place that's really, really quiet. Not this room though. This room has a computer running in it. It's not the best place to record. Well, at least while the computer's on. I actually do record in here. My studio is right next to me, but I'll show you that in a minute. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and go take a look at what I use to record my voiceover so you can actually get an idea of what it takes uh, to at least get close to professional quality. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm moving in that direction. So let me show you what's next. This is my work table, although I tend to do most of my editing in the booth. 
At the heart of my recording studio is the MacBook Pro, which contains my DAW, or recording software, Adobe Audition. I also have monitors in case I want to hear what my recordings sound like. And here is your first glance at the monstrosity known as the Blanket Fort. Ah! Terrifying, right? Inside the booth, I have my cans or headphones to monitor myself as I record. This Focusrite Scarlett Solo is my link back to the computer and is connected to my microphone. This monitor inside the booth helps me control my recording software. And here is the heart of my operation, my Rode NT1 microphone. It's not the world's most expensive mic, but it does one heck of a great job. Matter of fact, I'm using that mic right now. Obviously, the best place to do a recording is inside your dedicated vocal booth. Around us right now is the blanket fort. The blanket fort is made up of one inch PVC pipe and vocal booth to go uh, uh, producer's choice sound blankets. These sound blankets run about 50 bucks uh, a blanket on, uh, on vocal booth to go's website and they're fantastic at deadening sound. They are not soundproof by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, what they do is they deaden sound so that reverberations don't come back off the walls. Basically, it just deadens the space. Sound still gets in. Uh, every once in a while, I can hear jet planes flying overhead, traffic from the road, the guy with no muffler on his pickup truck across the street. That stuff still gets in, and hopefully one of these days I'll solve that problem. But for the time being, this booth is where I do my work. And, uh, you know, this is probably the most ideal space for the money. These things are cheap. They're not hard to build and they work great. I've gotten, I've made a lot of money in this booth so far. So this is the perfect spot to do my recordings. I'm going to do an audition here really quick. And then I'm actually going to do another audition. Uh, and then I will let you guys go and uh, get out there and, uh, you know, do some recording. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Blanket Fort Studio. I hope that some of the information I've given you was helpful. I know that this is not an encyclopedia of the ways that you can record yourself, but, uh, you know, I'm hoping that I'm giving you some ideas on how to at least get started. Remember, you don't need a lot of, a fancy, of fancy equipment. You just need enough to get your voice recorded so that you can send your auditions out. Like I said, there are resources out there on the web if you want to find out about a few of them. One of the best is a guy by the name of Mike Delgadio. He runs a, he runs a page on YouTube called Booth Junkie. The guy is a consummate professional. I love his voice. Uh, he's just amazing. Uh, he, and he's a true inspiration to voiceover artists everywhere. So if you, uh, if you haven't checked out Mike Delgadio's page, you should go ahead and do that now. Uh, Booth Junkie. Uh, he's available on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, the whole nine yards. The guy's all the way out there. Um, next week, I've got something really special planned for the show, hopefully. So uh, make sure you tune in next week. We'll see how far I get with it. Um, but, uh, you know, come back. I will have more information. And as I become more of a professional, I will give you guys, you know, anything that I learn to help you become a professional voice artist too. Why not? We should all help each other out. That's the way I see it. All right, guys, take it easy, break a leg. I will see you next time on the Blanket Fort Studio.